Guys, with all the crazy rain and flooding that's been going on here in Sydney for the last month, I have had literally not a single night to do any photography at all, and the forecast says that that's probably gonna continue for a quite a while at this stage. So I figured this would be an excellent opportunity to run you through my image processing technique using Photoshop. Specifically, I'm going to use my image of the Lagoon and Trifford Nebulae because they were taken with a pretty short overall exposure and also with an unmodified DSLR, and I've had a lot of requests on how I got the colors that I did using that camera. Now I'm gonna see how close I can get to that original image. It's probably not gonna come out exactly the same because I don't do it exactly the same every time. It's 90% similar. Style does come into it quite a bit. So anyway, let's jump on the computer and, and see how we go. Cool, all right, so we've got the image loaded up here. The very first thing I'm gonna do is hit Control H. Uh, to get rid of that grid, which we don't want. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, under image, go to mode and change that to a 16 bit so that we can actually make adjustments to it. So change that to exposure and gamma, leave those set as default. And this is our stacked image. We can already see a little bit of nebulosity, but obviously there's a, a lot of data in there that we need to just tease out. So first thing we'll do is just unlock that and duplicate this layer so we can always get back to that bottom layer if we need it. And I'm just gonna call this uh, initial stretch. Alrighty, so I'm going to now hit Control L to get these le levels up. And I wanna make sure that I can view this histogram uh, specifically with the colors uh, option selected. If you can't see that, just go to window and make sure the histogram is ticked and it'll come up as a tab which you can drag wherever you like. I put it here. And so basically we just wanna match up these levels and get the colors kind of overlapping. So I'll just bring the red in a little bit, but that's pretty close to the edge and I do not want to clip anything. So I'm doing this and I'm just monitoring over here and I want to see where that, I want to basically get that in the center. The red peak is a little wider than the green and blue in this case. And that's pretty normal because there's so much red in the images. So that's basically what we're looking for. Gray in the middle, a tiny sliver of red on either side. That's pretty good. All right, and then we are going to do a quick stretch. You could do a another layer for this if you like, but I tend to do uh, my levels and my curve stretch in one layer. So I hit Control M to bring up this curves thing. Now you can manually stretch this kind of like that, uh, and that will work just fine. What I like to do is use, uh, this is the first of the plugins I use. This one's totally free. And basically uh, I just use this ArcScience 10 which is the softest of the bunch. I can go 30 and you can see it stretches it more, 100 more so again. But I like to just do this a couple times and I'm gonna just start with 10. Like I said, start off pretty soft. And that's looking good. And so I'll go Control, Alt, Shift and E, which will stamp all my layers onto a new layer. And I'm gonna call this Levels 2 and Control, L again. Now I've got my colors all lined up so I don't need to individually move each channel now. I can just leave it on the RGB and drag this up without clipping anything, just like that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna do one more thing before I remove the stars here. So what I'm going to do is make another new layer, Control Alt Shift E again, and I'm gonna call this Gradient Exterminator. And so this is a paid plugin and obviously it is not 100% necessary. Uh, this image is actually really not too bad, but some of my others, the light pollution uh, can be pretty bad and you do get quite a bit of gradient. So this RC Astro filter, gradient exterminator, and I like to use medium detail and low aggressiveness. I've found that works the best for me and my taste. So you can see that is a much flatter image. It's a lot of brightness coming from up here and kind of is a gradient that runs across the screen like that. So this looks a lot flatter, a lot more even. So that's perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to flatten the image because we're about to remove the stars and we want to, I'm gonna use StarNet version two to do that. The smaller the image file, the, the quicker that process will be. So I'm gonna go flatten image. So it's all in one layer now. And I'm just going to go save as, and I'm going to call this for StarNet. And just go save. Uh, I want no image compression. 
and I've got a PC, so those are the settings I want. Hit OK. Great. Now I'm going to open StarNet. And I'm going to browse for my input file, uh, which I saved right here, and I called it for StarNet. And then my output file I'm going to call from StarNet. You can call it Starless, whatever you want to call it. I'll just call it from StarNet for now. I would encourage you to tick this finer tiles option. It's just going to basically do a better job. It's going to take a lot longer because it's going to do, it's going to remove the stars in much, much smaller sections uh, at a time. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to leave that unticked though uh, and just hit run. So guys, while this is running, I just want to quickly explain why I'm choosing to remove the stars at this point. It looks like I haven't stretched the image enough and there's a lot more detail in there and that is absolutely correct. The reason that I want to do it at this point is because I'm kind of happy with how the stars look right now. They're not overpowering. They're kind of a, a nice level. And I know if I stretch everything, including the stars, then I'm just going to have these really bright stars. I'm going to have to deal with some other way later. So I prefer to remove the stars kind of now when I've only half stretched the image. Uh, and that way, when I go to stretch the nebulosity, I'll leave the stars completely unaffected. We must be pretty close to done here. We are in fact done. Perfect. All right, so here is my starless version of this image. So I've got the same same thing twice here. So what I'm going to do now is I want to get a layer that is just the stars and nothing else. Now you can see it's maybe because I didn't pick the finer tiles option. It's actually missed a star here. We'll also need to deal with that star because I don't want to stretch that one star and not everything else in the image. So we'll go around and, and kind of clean up the image a little bit in general. Same thing again, I'm going to unlock this. I'm going to duplicate it so that I can always go back to that initial layer if I need it. And I'm just going to call this layer heal. So I'm just going to go through the image and clean up any of these missed stars or artifacts. So I'm going to Zoom in, the best way to do this is you can just use the healing brush tool, make it pretty big, whatever you're trying to heal, make the brush you know, a fair bit bigger than it so that you encapsulate everything. I've got some flexure and some, some tilt between the sensor and the optical train of my telescope and this is something that I've not been able to figure out yet. So the left side of my images always look really bad and we're gonna end up cropping this in quite a bit to maybe even somewhere like here. And we'll still get left with some of this, some of these oval shaped stars, unfortunately, but that's the nature of the Evo star beast that I have right now. So I'm just looking for any other artifacts. This really isn't that bad. Now this again is a star cluster over here. So that's this here is that. So again, that little bit of brightness is kind of meant to be there. So I don't want to mess with that. A little bit of something there we'll clean up. And you can really be very meticulous here if you want to be. I generally think less is more because you can make things worse very easily uh, by using this healing brush. All right, so what I'm going to do now is go back to the, uh, the image from before, before we remove the stars. And what I'm going to do is go image, and I'm going to go apply image, and I'm going to pick the starless version. And I'm going to change this blending mode to subtract. Make sure all these other settings are as you can see on the screen here. What we have now is we've taken that original image, subtracted the starless image, so what we get left with is just the stars. So this is great, I have basically a layer of just the stars, and you can see that bright star is on there because I made sure to remove it from the previous image. So I'm going to hit OK, I'll unlock that, and I'm going to call this layer stars, and then I'm going to drag it onto the first image, or onto the starless image, I should say. And you need to make sure that this is centered correctly. Uh, we're going to change the blending mode from normal to, I'm going to go with linear dodge add, and that will uh, basically do what we need it to do. And we'll have an image that looked exactly like it did earlier. But uh, now I can just toggle the stars on and off. So when I'm doing my edits, I can do it without the stars or with them if I want to do that for some reason. So what I'm going to do now is again, control alt shift E and because I don't have that star layer visible, it won't stamp the stars on there. And we're just going to basically continue. So I'm going to keep going with my levels and curve stretching. So I'm pretty sure my levels are good now. I'm going to do another one of these stretches here. You can see how much more details brought out. If we would have done that with the star layer, 
then we would have just made the stars that much brighter and made our lives really different. That might even be a little bit aggressive, but we're gonna go with that for now. And uh, again, we'll get these levels sorted. I don't wanna clip any of that red off. That looks pretty good. And I might just move the green and blue slightly more in because they don't look perfectly centered anymore. And that's fine, we can always do this. Looks pretty good. Now you can already see this is looking, you know, pretty good. There's obviously a lot of background noise and dust. Personal flavor is gonna come into it. You know, how much of that faint dust do you want or do you want more of that inky black uh, background? And that's all gonna be personal taste. It always looks a lot worse right now before the stars come back in. If you put the stars back in, that the kind of noise disappears a little bit. Now what I should actually do at this point is do a bit of a crop because you can see these stacking errors really becoming quite an issue now. And we can also see really where the nebulosity starts and ends and, that, and the region of interest. So I don't want to crop too early because I might actually crop out something that is quite interesting and I didn't know it might have been some hidden detail. This is a, a good point at which to crop things in. And again, I'm going to do that with the stars in there because uh, I want to make note of where those really oval stars become quite a problem. And it really isn't, <laughs> it really is pretty much exactly where the nebula ends, but I'm not going to cut it off quite there because that will frame it up a little bit weirdly. So I'm definitely going to bring it down a bunch. Uh, we're unfortunately going to lose all of that up there. And we'll just make it nice and small. And I might bring this in a little bit further here. Make sure I get that star cluster in and we'll make sure we get that bright star in too. I like that, that bright star. Alrighty. So I'm going to turn the stars back off. Stamp everything again. And now we are going to do some contrast curve stretching. So more of those S curves to bring out a bit more of the nebulosity and, and uh, drop that background uh, sky, make it a little bit blacker and that'll remove some of the apparent noise. I'm gonna call that contrast. So again, I'm gonna go control M. And what I wanna do is use this little clicker here and that's gonna let me select a region of interest. And this is, I want this kind of area, all this stuff that's really noisy and hazy right now to get a lot darker. So I'm gonna just physically pull that down. Not too far, because I don't want to sacrifice too much of that faint nebulosity. And then I'm gonna go somewhere in the faint nebulosity here, uh, somewhere like there. And I, I want that to come back up a little bit. So just something like that. You can see that really pulled out the detail in the core of the nebula as well. So we can have a look at the before and after there. You can see much punchier, we dropped that background, brought out the nebula, it really jumps out at you when you when you look at it like that. All right, so we're gonna stamp all that. Now we're gonna use the first action from this uh, Astronomy Tools action set. Now this is a paid uh, plugin and you can certainly process the image without it. To me, it is worth it for this one process and this one process alone. It's just that good that I use it for every, every single photo. Uh, and that is the local contrast enhancement. So I'm gonna run it. And basically what we're gonna do is it's going to bring out a lot of detail and a lot of sharpness in the nebulosity and the regions of interest and basically leave all the, the stars alone. Don't worry if you see that, just hit okay. Let's call this layer local contrast enhancement. So have a look at the nebula here, especially at the, the dust lanes and, and all of that before and after. You can really see it just just brings things back into focus and brings some sharpness into the image. It will introduce a little bit of noise in the background uh, of the image, but that's fine. We're going to deal with noise in other ways. Uh, that's really good. And you could even potentially run this twice. I'm going to do that. Uh, and we can always just delete it or dial it back if we think it's a little too much. So let's see, let's go again. And this is really all about, you know, personal taste. How sharp do you want your image to be and how much noise are you willing to put up with basically to get that sharpness. So that's probably a little heavy for me. I don't want to completely get rid of it, but I might just set that to around 40% opacity. And yeah, that's better. It hasn't hurt my noise too much. 
and I don't feel it's really overly sharp to the point where it looks fake. And when we do some noise reduction, we'll probably lose a bit of that anyway. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do the first round of noise reduction, space noise reduction, and uh, another uh, action from this uh, set here is the space noise reduction action. So the joy of this is that it's gonna make a mask that you can see on the screen here where it's basically masking the, the cores of the nebulae so it's not going to run the process on those parts that it masks, just everything else. So it does a good job of removing noise in the background, but not in the nebulas, uh, which is why it's a little better than most other noise reduction uh, options you have. So again, let's have a look at a before and after, I'm mostly looking at these darker regions. You can see it, it really softens that noise. And like I said, you could do a, a couple rounds of this as well, like we did with the local contrast enhancement. You can see it gets a little softer here, but nowhere near as much as it did there. So it's just a very nice algorithm that that runs. Anyway, we're gonna get rid of noise in some other ways right now. I'm gonna call this uh, camera raw filter one. So basically um, we're gonna go to filter and we're gonna go to uh, camera raw filter. And this is basically gonna open up what looks like Lightroom. So we're gonna get all these sliders and things like that that are, you know, we can do a whole bunch of things all at once. Main thing that we can do here, obviously, is we can change the exposure. So if we wanna help bring out a bit more of that faint detail, but also, you know, bring in a bit more noise, we have that option. If we wanna make the whole thing a little bit darker, um, then we have that option. For me, I'm probably gonna leave this at zero. I, I kind of like where it's at right now. We can do some universal contrast enhancement. So that will again bring the those back that background uh, a lot blacker and inkier if that's the style you're going for. Conversely, if you want to bring out as much of that faint detail as possible, you can actually bring that contrast slider back uh, and that will bring back a little, of the, a little bit of the detail. So particularly look around the edges of the nebula, nebulae when I do this. You can see they, you can make them appear and disappear just with this slider. So for me, I actually wanna make it a little punchier. I want a, a little bit blacker, inkier background. So I'm gonna do, do a bit of universal contrast enhancement in this case. Uh, and again, you could do the same thing with highlights and shadows. I wouldn't really touch the whites and blacks. The, with those sliders, things can get really out of, out of hand quickly. So just up to you where your personal preference is. If you want to tone down the core of the nebula, you can you know, bring that slider back. If you want to bring it up and make it stand out a bit more, you could do that. I'm going to leave this at zero because I want to leave this pretty much as natural as possible. And then shadows is a good way, another good way that you can bring out some more of that fainter detail or again, more inky blackness. So all personal preference here. I'll just do a tiny bit more on the inky black side of things just to get a bit more punch in the image. And that's all I'm gonna do for this camera raw filter. We'll come back here in a second and do a bit more, but you can see huge difference there. So like I said, I erred more on the, I wanna get rid of a bit of this noise and haze and make it a bit punchier image. And you can see those nebulas really jump out at you again. Uh, so you're probably sensing a theme that I, I like the nebulae to jump out. And we can always check how it looks when we bring the stars back in as well. So, I mean, that's looking really good. You, all that noise that we thought we saw, all this noise just melts away once you bring the stars back in, really. Uh, and honestly, look, we could stop the processing right here, and this would be an excellent image. Everything we're doing from here is really just fine tuning, getting that last, you know, one or two percent out of it. This would be a fine image, but uh, I'm gonna see if we can get just that little bit more. We're gonna go camera raw filter two, and this time we're gonna focus a bit more on noise reduction. So there's a couple ways we can do that. Camera raw filter, make sure you don't click that top one, or that will apply everything you just did on the previous camera raw filter rather than giving you the, the options again. The very first thing we're going to do is go to detail and we are going to just turn the noise reduction up a little bit. You wanna kind of zoom in on a region that has both some of the dark dust that you want to keep sharp and also some of the noise that you're trying to reduce. And you're just trying to find a balance basically. So it's not hurting us too, too much in terms of the sharpness, but you know, we're just gonna bring that down. Color noise reduction, I'm actually gonna zoom out. You can definitely crank this one up a little more aggressively and that's just going to any kind of weird splodges and other artifacts that might have occurred uh, from Starnet or otherwise that will help clean up. And then I'm gonna go back to basic 
and we can do a, a bit more noise reduction here as well. So the, the texture and clarity sliders are really the two main ones that I want to play with. And so just pull them to their extreme to know, to find out what they do. If I do this, I kind of blur everything out and make it a lot softer, but I reduce a lot of noise. If I go the other way, I'm gonna bring a lot of sharpness and detail, but obviously bring back a bit of that noise. So it's just finding the balance. For me, I'll bring back a little bit of texture because it's not hurting my noise too much. But yeah, we'll just get a little bit of sharpness. I'm gonna pretty soft at just 16, uh, up six, plus 16. And then the clarity is gonna do kind of a similar thing. We'll increase the clarity, we'll add more more sharpness, more depth. You can really see this makes the nebula look a lot more three-dimensional if you crank that all the way, and vice versa, you can make it look really flat and dull uh, if you go the other way. So this is just about finding a balance and where you're happy. I definitely want to bring this up a little bit, bring a bit of that third dimension and depth to the image. Something like that looks pretty good. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do here is just increase the vibrance and saturation a bit. And this is one thing that gets overlooked a, a fair bit is the difference between vibrance and saturation. In this image, it's not gonna make a massive difference. But basically the difference is that vibrance is really designed for uh, human portrait photography. It's going to increase the depth of all the colors other than the kind of pinks, yellows, browns, beige, those kind of skin tones. So it's meant to be able to increase color depth of you know the background and everything else other than the person's skin, where saturation is just going to universally increase all color depth. So particularly with Milky Way images, um, there is a very big difference because you get that kind of yellowy beige uh, band of the Milky Way, which if you use the vibrance slider, won't be affected so much, while the reds and blues of the nebulas will be, uh, where saturation obviously will, like I said, do everything. So in this case, it's not gonna be a big difference. I'm gonna just increase them roughly about 20 each. Uh, generally go a little bit softer on the saturation, again, because there are still some pinks in this image. And if you go too far, then it, it just looks a bit overexposed and fake. But this is a good way to make it look like you do have an actual modified camera. I mean, you can see the color we're getting already even before we move these sliders um, just with a stock camera. So there's so much you can do with a stock camera. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And we can always do before and after if you just hit this eyeball. And you can see what a difference that makes. It's punchier, it's more three-dimensional, the colors are a little richer. Uh, just everything about that is better to me. I mean, this image is looking really, really good. Um, I'm uh, pretty hesitant to do too much more because at a certain point, there's, you know, diminish, diminishing returns firstly, but actually you can, uh, you can even just start to over, overdo it. Uh, and I don't want to get to that point. So I'm just gonna quickly zoom in and have a look. I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna pixel peep because I know that my stars aren't perfect with this setup. I didn't, I didn't have any auto guiding going either. So it's, you know, I'm, perfection is not exactly what we're striving for. So I'm gonna turn the stars off one more time here. I'm just gonna call this layer color. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this color layer here is I want to go to the adjustments here and I want to do the selective color. And basically this is going to allow me to tweak individual color channels uh, if, I, if I want. So the main things that I care about probably here are, are the reds and, and the cyans, if I want to bring out a bit more of that nebulosity, uh, or just again, make it a little punchier. So I want to remove a bit of the, the blue cyans from the red nebulosity, so can really see the difference that that makes. I can basically lose saturation or increase saturation uh, this way as well. And this is a really, really effective way to make your stock camera look like it is actually a modified camera. I'm not gonna go crazy here, just something like that. Play with the other sliders too. Don't wanna mess with that. That's doing weird things. Set it to zero, yellow, similar, don't wanna touch it. Now the blacks can get very dangerous very quickly because we can remove all the red, basically, or bring it back in, but at the, at the you know, we'll lose some of that fame to detail. Again, I'm gonna leave that at zero. I think that looks pretty good. Let's do something similar with the, the blues and the cyans to see if we can bring a bit more up here. So let's increase the cyan in the cyan. Just bring, you can see it just brings a bit more depth to that color. We, what we're really doing here is increasing color contrast as opposed to, you know, black and white contrast that we normally talk about. 
Um, we can do the same here. That's not really doing anything I like. Yellow, again, nothing I like. This is all about personal taste. You can see if I drop that, I actually bring back a bit of detail right here. And we can also do it with the blacks. This one's gonna be uh, more about that overall contrast. And all I'm gonna do is move the black slider and I may just leave this as it is too. This can get very dangerous very quickly. So you gotta be really careful on this one. If you want a super punchy image, you can go for something like that. You can keep the stars in there while you do this if you like. And some people really like this kind of style where it's just like the brighter parts of the nebulae and they really jump out at you. For me, that's a little, a little heavy handed. Uh, vice versa, you can you know, obviously make it a little, little hazier if you like. This is a really, really scary but powerful tool to make wholesale changes to the image. I'm actually going to just slightly bring it uh, a little blacker to again, just a little bit more punch and contrast in the image. Uh, but like really soft, just that, that you know, 2%. Uh, so let's have a look at the before and after. I'll now get rid of that. Yeah, just a little bit, little bit punchier. The blacks are a little blacker, the reds are a little redder, the blue hasn't really changed that much in the end. But I'm really liking where this is at. For me, there are a lot of ways and lots of people will show you the color range, uh, select and then filter minimum method to reduce the size of stars. But for me, I actually find that this method is a thousand times easier and it works just the same, really. So what you're gonna do on the stars layer, right click, convert to smart object. We convert this to a smart object because now we can make changes to this layer without affecting everything else. Whereas if we leave that as a normal layer, any changes we make to it will also be applied to everything else. Now that it's a smart object, I'm going to go image adjustments and I'm going to go exposure and I can just set the exposure to whatever I want. And you can see it's only affecting the star layer without affecting the nebulosity at all. So you can just set this to wherever you like. Don't go too crazy because then you will make the stars look weirdly shaped. Like you can see if I drop them down that far and then zoom in, it's actually not even that bad. That actually worked quite well. A lot of the time though, if you go too heavy handed on the star reduction using this method, it'll, it'll look a bit weird. So I normally take it a little bit easier than that. And again, this is gonna just be a personal preference thing. How much of a feature do you want the stars to be in your image? So it's really easy again, because I've made this a smart layer, I can just double click on this exposure and get this slider back whenever I want and just set it to the level I want. So this is where we started more or less. I will do, I will reduce it a little bit something like that. And that's looking really good. All right, guys, I hope you got a lot out of this. That is it for my processing technique. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, you can certainly live without the plugins that I use, but they do make life uh, a little easier and quicker, I think. The main thing is definitely using Starnet is an absolute must do. It makes your life so much easier. You don't uh, get these super bright stars. It's really easy to bring out nebulosity without overdoing the stars and all that kind of stuff. And it just gives you a lot of flexibility on exactly how you wanna proceed and it's totally free, so why wouldn't you? Please let me know in the comments if there are any other processing tutorials you'd like me to show, whether it's uh, more about Deep Sky Stacker or Milky Way and Wide Field stuff or Nightscape stuff and blending tutorials. Be happy to do all of that, so please let me know. Until then, keep on looking up.